Angels and Yankees. Clemens still searching for his first game one win ever. Let's take you back. When a 24 year old Roger Clemens won three games in 86. Now back to Tuesday a little bit older. And just as tasty. Meanwhile Derek Jeter handling his business in the bottom of the first. He becomes the fourth player in postseason history with three career first inning home runs. One nothing Yankees. They're off and run his 94th postseason hit a Major League Baseball record. Bottom of the fourth. Tied at one, one on for Jason Giambi, and he's clubbing. He becomes the first player in postseason history to homer four and against the Yankees in consecutive postseasons. 3 1 New York. Giambi gets the extra love from the fans. Top of the fifth, Adam Kennedy on first base. He's running with the pitch, David Eckstein protecting him. Eckstein just throws the bat out there. Watch again, remix, please. Eckstein says, I'm not going to let my homie get thrown out. <laughs> That's baseball, you and that's why the home. little man a little bit later <laughs> delivers the hit and run. That single slides in, and Kennedy slides into third. X9, two for five. After a Tim Salmon walk, bases loaded, Garrett Anderson just throw the bat out there. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. A two-strike pitch lands in left field, two-run score, and this game is tied at three, and we have a party. Bottom of the fifth, New York strikes back. That's Rondell White. And that's going, going, gone. He becomes the 76th Yankee to homer in the postseason. Yankees take a 4-3 lead. Top of the six, Clemens, Troy Gloss. It's all about Troy Gloss. Gloss sends this pitch over the left field wall. Clemens goes five and two-thirds, give up eight hits, four and runs, only two strikeouts. He's done. Game tied at four. Bottom of the six, and how about the defense? Angels execute the defensive shift because Giambi hitting 382 in the postseason. Well, this time he hits into a 3-5-3 double play. Yankee set an AL postseason record by grounding into four double plays. Top of the eight, 4 4. Ramiro Mendoza pitching mistake. Mm. Troy Gloss does it again. He becomes the seventh player to hit two home runs in his postseason debut. Angels go up 5 4. And oh boy, can they take one home? Can they sneak out of Yankee Stadium with the win? Well, Ben Weber messing around in the bottom of the eighth. Alfonso Soriano draws the two-strike walk. Derek Jeter, patience, patience. He draws the two-strike walk. Mike Sosa says, enough of that. I'm not messing around. Scott Schoenweiss comes in facing Giambi, and Giambi puts it on the ground, but Scott Spezio got to come up with that. He does it. Soriano scores, and there goes the lead, and here comes trouble because we're tied at five. So Brendan Donnelly comes in. Bernie Williams, his first at bat ever against Donnelly. Woo, things work out. The huge home run. Bernie has 18 RBI and 18 career postseason game ones. New York takes an 8-5 lead, and Rudy Giuliani says, oh! Derek Jeter says, yeah, what about Bernie? It was a great feeling. Everything happened so quick you know, at that moment. I, I don't think I remember running the bases. So Bernie floats around the bases in the top of the ninth. Mariano Rivera floats in and closes the door. Garrett Anderson the shot. Great catch by Giambi. Yankees win game one, 8-5. There's a party over here as the Yankees take care of business. So Clemens still hasn't won a game one, but his team wins for the first time in his sixth career postseason game one starts. Actually. It's not all about Roger, really, it's about Bernie. The Yankees are 13 and two in the postseason when Bernie hits a home run. I marvel at it. Um, you know, this year with a different set of people. Um, but you, you, this is a magical place. And you know, you hate to rely on, on the magic of Yankee Stadium uh, because it keeps you from working hard at it. Incredible, I mean, that's what the postseason magic's all about, guys that you know do the little things and that's what wins that's what we always talk about that you know it's about winning it's not about stats or, or anything more than that well actually we are concerned about stats because bernie williams now has 17 career postseason home runs only mickey mantle and reggie jackson have more with top of the first bases empty tim salmon out a home alone shot one nothing angel salmon's first home run of the postseason is one for five on the night Top of the second, one out, still one nothing Angels. Excuse me, make that two zip. Scott Spezio, three for five on the night. He parks that 3-1 pitch. That's a home alone shot at 2 nothing Angels. Now, the problem for Andy Pettit, yeah, location, location, location. Jorge Posada wants it in different places, then he gets it. And that led to two early solo home runs. Pettit, done after three innings, he gave up eight hits, four earned runs, and also a shout-out. 
From the third, one ball. out, DJ facing Kevin Apier. 3-1 count, takes strike two. Didn't think it was strike two, so next pitch, he makes sure there won't be a strike three. That's a solo home run. Jeter's second home run of the series. It's 4-1 Angels. Here come the Yankees. Bottom of the fourth, though. 4-1 Angels, no outs, no one on. Robin Ventura, easy play, not so easy because of bad communication by the Angels. So that's a single. Still bottom of the fourth. Two out, two on. Juan Rivera, same location, same flavor. Ball drops in, two run score. 4-3 Angels, Rivera cuts the lead to one. And you sense it, here come the Yankees again. So Francisco Rodriguez, who made his major league debut on September 18. He comes in and looks like a double play. Six inning over, no Benji Gill throws it away to keep the inning alive. And you know what this means, Gill upset. Alfonso Soriano looking for number 40. It's not the regular season, but hi puppy. It's still number 40, a two run shot. Yankees take the lead, 5-4 and Gill really upset. Cover the kids eyes, top of the eighth. El Duque cruising until he runs into Garrett Anderson. El Duque's relief effort, flawless, but Anderson changes everything. Anderson, five for 10 in the series, and we're tied at five in this game. Troy Gloss, the next batter. Went to UCLA, and uh, not that that matters, but those are back-to-back -back home runs. Watch Bernie's glove, it goes over the wall. Gloss's third home run of the series. Angels post a team postseason record with 17 hits. El Duque done. Bottom of the eighth. Ben Weber on the mound. Troy Percival warming up. Means Percival's on his way, right? Raul Mondesi. Weber sticks his hand out there, goes off his hand. Everybody safe. Weber can't believe it. Trainer comes out, and so does Weber. He's done. So Sosha goes with Per. No, he goes with Brendan Donnelly again. Check Percival can't believe it. He's like, what's up, dog? I'm ready. Donnelly in the face, John Vanderwall, and this time Donnelly takes care of business, gets the job done. So now Sosha says, Troy, come on down. Two outs, two on, seven five Angels. First pitch from Percival. Ow! Mm. Hit Soriano in the back. Ouch. Soriano takes first, gets a little back rub. Next batter, bases loaded. Derek Peter steps in one two count and he is stuck in pause. Was that a strike? It was called a strike. Jeter won an 11 lifetime versus Percival because that was called the outside corner. Bomb of the ninth, one out. Runners on first and second, eight, six angels. That's Nick Johnson. That's Troy Percival. That's the two-two pitch, and he's still in search of. 97 mile per hour heat too much for Johnson. Last chance for the Yankees, and this is Raul Mondesi in a if he was hitting in the silo, it would be a home run. Yeah, it would, but he's not. No, Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Yankees done. Angels win 8-6 as Percival gets it done and ties the series at a game of peace. Troy Percival, the difference in finally, finally, he's called upon by Socha after he was left in the bullpen on uh, Tuesday night. Angels rip off a franchise high, 17 hits. Garrett Anderson, five for 10 in this series. Kevin Apier goes five innings, five hits, three earned runs, but more importantly, Troy Percival gets the four out save even after allowing three hits and one earned run. I want the ball whenever he'll give it to me. If it's in the seventh, I'll go out and throw three. Uh, this, is, this is the end of the year right here. You know, we lose, we go home, and I'm not looking forward to that, so whatever it takes to win. As I say, I, I just like the way we keep coming at people. There's no quit in either ball club, and um, I always feel like we're going to win. This magical place makes me feel that way. Hopefully we can take it with us on the road. We really feel that we're, uh, we're still in this uh, series. Coming our way with a win, obviously, uh, give us a little momentum going back home. Um, got, got a big challenge ahead of us. Yeah, it's a big challenge ahead, but the problem here is the Yankees' bullpen. During the Joe Torre era, they have been flawless. But Own Ortiz, Yankees' Angels, game three from Anaheim Ortiz, his first career postseason start. It didn't go well. Top one, one on, one out, Jason Giambi up. And the shift is on third baseman Troy Gloss, way over near second base, the 3-1. Derek Jeter running on the pitch, ball four to Giambi. The throw goes through as Gloss. The third baseman can't handle it over a second, and Jeter with a heads-up play all the way into third. So the Yankees have him on the corners, Mike Socia. And look at Jeter. Heads-up play, figure, hey, nobody's on third. I'm going to head over there. And he beats Ortiz to the bag. Another heads-up postseason play by Derek Jeter. What else is new? Two batters later, they're loaded for Robin Ventura. 
to right center. Jeter comes in. They wave Giambi. It's a double for Ventura, and the Yankees have a 2 0 lead. Anaheim was down 3 0 in the second. It's Jeter again. And look at Adam Kennedy behind Ortiz and behind the second base bag with a spin and throw. 4 1 New York in the third. Ortiz in trouble. Ball Odyssey. Ball four. Mike Socia has had it. He pulls Ortiz, who gave up six runs on three hits in two and two third. John Lackey comes on. Nick Johnson. It drops into center. Bernie scores, and the Yankees have a 5 1 lead. They would lead 6 1 going into the bottom of the third. Tim Salmon. And back come the Angels down the left field line. Kennedy scores. They wave Erstad. It's a double for Salmon or a big night. And the Angels are within three at 6 3. Bottom four, watch Mike Mussina. The pitch to Benji Molina, and Mussina showing grimacing, a little bit of discomfort there. Next batter, it's Adam Kennedy. Anaheim hits seven homers in seven regular season games against New York. They've got eight in these three playoff games. Angels within two at 6-4. After the inning, Mussina leaves tightness in his right groin. He allowed four runs on six hits in four. Ape must not kill Ape. Bottom seven, Angels down 6-5. Two on, two out. Scott Spezio past Soriano. Anderson comes in, and we're tied at six. It's all in the scrolls. It is in the scrolls. <laughs> Soriano cannot quite get it, much to the dismay of Mike Stanton. How about 20-year-old rookie Francisco Rodriguez? Anaheim's bullpen works six and a third shutout innings, allowing only three hits. He gets one. Rivera with two outs of the game. Still tied in the eighth. Kennedy into short right. Mondesi can't come up with this one either. Kennedy running all the way, heads into second for a double, and check it out, Mondesi. Nice effort to get to it, but he lets it get by him. And as a result, Kennedy is in a scoring position. He's the go-ahead run. Two batters later, Erstad facing Stanton. Down the right field line. Kennedy will score easily. Rangers have hit New York pitching for 41 hits and 22 runs in three games. They're up 7-6. First pitch from Steve Carson to Tim Salmon. The next batter is gone. 9-6 Anaheim, and the Ed is going nuts. Salmon mobbed at the dugout by his teammates, but now they're going to close it out. Troy Percival gets Jason Giambi to fly out to Anderson in left field, and Percival and the Angels can celebrate. They win that Anaheim bullpen superb, and the Angels take a 2-1 series lead. It's only the second time ever the Yankees have allowed eight runs in consecutive postseason games. The last time, the 1955 World Series when they lost to Brooklyn. The Yankees one loss away from elimination. It's David Wells versus Jared Washburn, who goes on three days rest as they're back at the end for Saturday's game four. Mike Sosha, how about that bullpen? For the most part, I thought we kept playing our game. Um, I, I thought we kept pressure on them. We kept chipping away. It would not have been possible, though, without the job our bullpen did. If we, um, you know, if those guys didn't start putting up the zeros when they did, uh, you know, that game would have been, uh, you know, put away earlier in the Yankees' favor. You judge how good a team is by how they respond to negative stuff. So it was a, it was a terrible night tonight. Uh, but one game gets us going home, and that's what we're Angels voted our Sports Center Showcase highlight. That would be Robin Ventura, runners in first and third, off Jared Washburn, and then off the wall, George Posada. They'll call him Jorge once in a while. He'll score one nothing Yanks. And look, just by inches, he misses the Joe's cheese fries. It would have been a three-run shot, one zip lead for the Yanks. Top five tied at one, Derek Jeter. And did I mention? He's dreaming. But look at Garrett Anderson. Get he does not care that he's dreaming. Juan Rivera tags and scores just a sack fly. Jeter, so close. Washburn, another inning where he got out of trouble with just one run. Could have been much worse. Now let's go to the home half of the fifth. Your first batter, Sean Wooten, juices this offering from David Wells, and that is to the rock pile. Wells never lost a postseason game as a Yank. But guess what? We're tied at two, and the Angels are just getting started. Here comes the merry-go-round. Darren Erstead with men at the corners. Baseball turn. Bernie Williams. He's coming in, Alfonso Soriano coming out, and the baseball seems to find the happy medium. That's your former driller, Benji Gill, scoring 3-2 Angels. Wells not pleased. Well, then this certainly isn't going to make him feel any better. Tim Salmon, not to be confused with the carp, as mentioned. David Eckstein will score. It's 4-2 Angels. Next batter, Anderson. Yes, he is no relation. And now 
Armstead will score. It's 5-2 Angels. Couple of batters later. Scott Spezio working on a two for four day. Here's one of the two. Nice work by the Sand Frog. Salmon scores. 6-2 Angels. Wells, four and two-thirds, ten hits. Allowed six runs putt. He was responsible for two more base runners. And guess what? By the time he was done, he had eight runs to his credit. Ramiro Mendoza gives up another hit to Wooten. Anderson comes in. Two RBI in the inning for Wooten. Three for four. Scored three times. Benji Molina. That's your killer right there. Over Revere's head, did stay in the park, but Spezio chased home on that. Division Series record, eight runs in one inning for the Angels, it was 9-2. 9-4 Yanks, seventh, bases Chuck, perhaps best opportunity, last opportunity, Francisco Rodriguez, there's that guy again, winner in games two and three to shut him down. Top nine, the champagne is on ice. Troy Percival is on the bump. Johnson is in the box. Two off, two outs. Dan Schulman, drama. Yankees down to their final out. And the 1-0 pitch swung on and popped up. They should do it. David Eckstein back on the outfield grass, and the Angels have won it. And the Angels win the series 3-1. George Steinbrenner said if his team had to lose to anybody, he was happy for Gene Autry and the Disney people. Get that man a silver pass. First time since 97, the Yanks not going to the World Series. Angels win their first playoff series in team history. That's 40 some odd years in the making. They had lost in their previous six chances to clinch a playoff series. The 10 hits in an eight run fifth high major league postseason record. As for the Yanks pitching, whacked. Worst pitching performance in 57 postseason series. Team ERA of 8.21. Jared Washburn, a shade better. The Yankees. They never die, man. They, they put up a hell of a fight, and they're a great team, and we're just playing unbelievable right now. We get the big hit after big hit, and they got offense, smelled blood today, and they went out and had that big inning. And words can't describe how we're feeling right now. All the hard work and dedication you put in, all the tough times that you fought through, this is what it's all about. So we're going to try and keep doing this. You always, you know, hope you can do this and dream you can do it, and I tell you what, I'm going to make the most of it. I mean, uh... You know, I thought this would happen a lot sooner in my career than it hadn't, but you know what? It's here today, and I'm going to make most of it. The team that played the best one. Am I going to say they're the best team? I'm too proud to do that, but they, they, they played a whole lot better than we did. How stunning is this for you to have to figure out what to do if you're an LDS? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's different, but then you realize winning isn't easy. Well, the Angels led the majors with a 282 team batting average during the regular season, and, well, they got a lot better in the playoffs. <laughs> 376 average, highest ever in postseason series, scored nearly eight runs per game. The final total is 56 hits, 31 runs in four games, and they found a little power. Nine homers only had seven in seven games against the Yanks all season.